let's go way back. Way back on this channel. One of my first reviews was Ninja Gaiden. The arcade version and then the classic NES port. I figured it was time to review one of the sequels. And I figured why not just go with Ninja Gaiden 2. Now, I'm not entirely familiar with Ninja Gaiden 2 compared to the first game. Matter of fact, the four or five times I've played this game has been through emulation. I know many people love this game, some say it's better than the first game. So I figured it's time to sit down, play it, and check it out for myself. Ninja Gaiden 2 was developed and published by Tecmo. It was released in 1990. The game is also known as Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos. It was released in the arcade on the NES arcade cabinet. Its first ever release was on the NES. It can be also found on the Amiga and even in the compilation pack of the first three Ninja Gaiden games on the Super Nintendo. But I'm just going to review the NES version of the game. The story behind Ninja Gaiden 2 begins like this. One year after the events of the first game, the story opens up in the realm of darkness. You have a new badass bad guy to go after known as Ashtar. He is informed that Jakio, and I probably butchered that name, has been defeated. A U.S. Army Special Intelligence Unit member named Robert T. Sturgeon is sent out to find Ryu Hayabusa and wants him to take out Ashtar. Irene Liu has been captured and Ryu must save her in the Tower of Lija. You will go through a series of acts, seven to be exact, taking down enemies of a nice variety and bosses at the end of each stage as you go after Ashtar. Some of these levels are split up into multiple parts, which is really nice. So you actually have a little bit more than seven levels to go through. Throughout Ninja Gaiden 2, you will be able to pick up power-ups that will help you out. On top of that, you will do a lot of platforming, jumping back and forth, climbing, jumping over gaps, and of course, there are environmental disasters that you need to watch out for. For instance, level 2 has a gust of wind that can really screw you over and it's very frustrating. You have to time your jumps just right, but even that, it could still screw you over. It took me a long while to get past this level, but after I did, it, it felt like I accomplished something. Sometimes it was my fault, sometimes I felt that it was the game's fault, but you know, that's the way these retro games are. They're tough, and I like that. As for the power-ups, you get a nice range of them, from fireballs, boomerangs, shurikens, and even a way to have a double and triple attack, as you will have an orange ninja show up and attack the enemies. Pretty much it's like a mirror of your character. To get these power-ups, you will find these crystal orbs all over each level. They are pretty easy to break and get whatever power-up is inside. The graphics for Ninja Gaiden 2 are damn good. They look awesome on the NES. Now, if you remember, the first game had an arcade version, and it looked great for its time, and even the NES port looked great. It also had some glitching and flickering issues. Well, this game has that, but to me, it doesn't seem there as much. The animations are great, especially the cutscenes you will find throughout the game, and there's even one at the intro for the beginning of the game. The characters and enemy sprites look great. There's a lot going on in each level. The design of the levels are nice, and so are the backgrounds. Nothing I can really complain about. Tecmo did a badass job on this game. The music and sound effects are awesome. Great 8-bit style music, very well composed. Then again, Tecmo was known for having great music in their games, at least for the most part. I love the music during the cutscenes as well, and of course the music for each level. The sound effects are good, nothing mind-blowing, but still good. The difficulty? Oh damn, you're in for one hell of a ride. You see, the Ninja Gaiden series, at least back in the day, was balls to the wall tough. The first game is labeled as one of the toughest NES games. Now, I can get quite far in that game. Sure, I die a lot, but it happens. As for the difficulty for Ninja Gaiden 2, it's tough. Very tough. At least for me. Some people say it's easier, but then again, some people are better at video games than I am. And that's fine. Some will complain that it's too tough. Some will say that the game is a pile of crap because it's difficulty, and I think that's ridiculous. You just have to keep trying. Sure, I raged many times playing this, and to me, the hit detection can be a real pain in the ass. Either the enemy's hitting you, or maybe you have an issue hitting the enemy. Not only that, when you get hit, you get knocked back and sometimes fall to your death. You just have to keep powering through, and I like that about this game. I know many will disagree with me on that, but then again, I love games that are almost impossible to beat. This game is not impossible, though. It definitely can be played through and beaten. The controls are alright. Moving around is easy, using your weapon is easy, the power-ups can be a bit of a bitch to use. You have to hit the D-pad and then another button, and sometimes they can be really slow at responding. But other than that, they are very much playable, and you just gotta get used to them. That's pretty much all I can say on that. Ninja Gaiden 2 The Sword of Chaos is balls-to-the-wall tough. 
the game will give you a ride to hell and force you to fight your way back. The game is very much enjoyable, though. It's your typical tough NES game, and I really like it. The gameplay is enjoyable. The story is awesome. The graphics are good for being on an 8-bit NES console. The music and sound effects are good. The controls are okay. There are some flaws, especially when you get hit and knocked back, but that's part of the game, and you have to just deal with it. Not much I can really complain about. I think the first game is better, but Ninja Gaiden 2 is fun. If you like the first Ninja Gaiden game, check out the sequel. If you want to check out Ninja Gaiden 2, The Dark Sword of Chaos, there's a few ways you can. First of all, it can be found on the Nintendo Virtual Console. It can be found on the Wii U and 3DS. It was released on the 3DS in 2013 and on the Wii U in 2016, so you can pick it up digitally there. If you want a physical copy, the game is 49% rare. Prices on eBay are not bad. $5.51 for a loose cartridge, $13.88, $11.99, $10.50, $11.95, and what looks like a sealed copy for $125. Holy damn, that's expensive. The loose copies, though, are actually pretty good when it comes to price. Of course, the other way you could get this game is part of the Ninja Gaiden trilogy on the Super Nintendo, but that is very expensive, and at a later time, I will eventually review that. No, I don't own it, but obviously I can use emulation to review it. I know, I know. Oh, that's not the real way to play it. <sighs> get over it. The Ninja Gaiden series has had many games on a variety of home consoles and handhelds. There is a direct sequel to Ninja Gaiden 2, titled Ninja Gaiden 3, The Ancient Ship of Doom. Then the series was brought back in 2004 on the Xbox with numerous games on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, Nintendo DS, Wii U, and even a game on the PC. At a later time, I will review some of these games, if not most. I do need to find an Xbox if I'm going to play the reboot or whatever the hell it's called. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review of Ninja Gaiden 2, The Dark Sword of Chaos. Thanks for watching.